You know, I was in hopes that tonight would never end. Remember, on your first leave, like you promised. I promise. Help it, Blake. I met a girl. A beautiful girl. You realize I could get a court martial the trouble I've been in? Okay, I'm sorry, Blake. Well, you're sorry. That should impress the CEO. I thought I could depend on you. You're going to pull a screwball deal like this. Oh, Blake, did I ask you to wait for me? I told you. I met a girl. A special girl. Look! You're holding the dough, my dough, for the ride back to camp. So you met a dame. And I'm standing around here able for three hours. You know something, Jerry? I could kill you and really enjoy it. Most of the time, I find the practice of corporation law so absorbing that the days of the week have little or no meaning. But this day was different. I was well aware it was Friday, because the next day I was to start a weekend vacation up in the mountains at a place where I understand it's impossible to keep the fish from biting. I had no idea you were such a hero. You didn't. I thought I told you. But which of my many medals are you referring to? Well, to hear Colonel McGinnis tell it, I just thought you won the war single-handed. Just in Europe. McGinnis. McGinnis. Oh, he said he was a friend of yours. McGinnis. Army. Oh, you mean Captain McGinnis. I, I didn't want to interrupt you while you're working on the Conway petitions, but uh, he has been one sometime. You, you can see him, can't you? Sure, send him in. Yes, sir. Hero. You want to come in, Colonel? Hello, Herb. Oh, Max, good to see you. Ah, uh, Colonel now, you got promoted fast. Fast? It's been a few years, Herb. Oh, you're so right it has. <laughs> Sit down, will you? Thanks. Oh, you visiting? No, I'm stationed at Camp Lawton near Harrisburg. Oh. Uh, I've been reading and hearing about you, Herb, big corporation, counsel and all that. Well, good press agent. Well, you're a good officer, so it figures you're a good lawyer. 
You got a problem, Mac? No, but one of my boys has. His name's Blake Newman. He's accused of beating up another soldier at a railroad station. He's been arrested. The other boy's still unconscious, not expected to live. Well, why have you come to me, Mac? Two soldiers? Sounds like a case for army jurisdiction. That's policy. The offense violates the civilian laws of this town. The local authorities have jurisdiction. And since it's out of the Army's hands, I'd like to feel that somebody who knows what he's doing is looking after this boy's interests. Mac. I'm a corporation lawyer. A lawyer's a lawyer. Why is this case so important to you? Look, Herb. These two boys served under me. We saw plenty of action in Korea. I think a lot of them. And I couldn't believe it of either. Now, what do you say, Herb? It's a favor to me. Will you handle it? I'm sorry, Herb. Hell's in no condition to identify anyone. Doctors doubt if he'll even pull out of the coma. But you can't hold Newman purely on the porter's testimony. Why not? The porter overheard Newman threaten to kill Hale. A minute later, Hale's found unconscious, beaten up. Only circumstantial, Lieutenant. You've got to do a lot better. Unfortunately for Newman, we can. Colonel, Newman and Hale had a brutal battle outside their barracks a few weeks ago, isn't that right? Yes, they did. About gambling, wasn't it? That's correct, Lieutenant. They fought a lot. But believe it or not, basically they're good buddies. Thick or thin, they stick together. I'm not convinced, Colonel. Investigation has shown us that Newman has an uncontrollable temper. He's been in trouble before, twice as a matter of fact, for fighting. I still say you have no real case, Lieutenant. Maybe not, Herb. But if Hale dies, the district attorney told me today, Newman's going to be tried for manslaughter. Well, I want to see the defendant. Sure. Tell me, Mac, why do you believe so strongly in the boy's innocence? Hale once saved Newman's life in Korea. I just don't think Newman could forget that. How are you, Corporal? Not so good, sir. How's Jerry? Well, we, we don't know yet. Newman, this is Mr. Maris. He's an attorney. Corporal? How are you? But this is ridiculous, me being accused of beating up my best friend. Best friend? Yes, that's right. Well, since when do best friends stage fistfights over gambling games? Okay, I admit it. We fought lots of times, so what? Later, we always squared the beef away. Did you? You think I'm lying, Mr. Maris? I don't know. Well, in that case, I'm not so sure I want you for a lawyer. Well, I'm equally not sure that I want you as a client. Now, listen, Corporal. I've gone to a great deal of trouble to get you the best lawyer possible. You're in serious trouble. Now, you answer Mr. Maris's questions. But, sir, I didn't touch Jerry. You grabbed him, didn't you? That's what the porter said. Well, maybe I did. You also told him you wanted to kill him. Well, I didn't mean it that way. Hale was waiting for you with the money, wasn't he? The money for you to get back to camp? Only it was late and you got sore, isn't that right? That's right. He promised to meet me at 3 o'clock sharp in the morning at the depot. But he came late and you were in trouble because of him. That was all going through your mind, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You have a violent temper, don't you, Newman? Sometimes. But I didn't follow Jerry outside. Exactly what did you do? Sit down. Well, I... I went over to an empty phone booth and I sat down for a while. I was tired and disgusted and sore. I wanted to cool off. Talk to anyone? No. We had an hour to wait for the next train. What then? I went to the snack bar where the cops arrested me. What did you and Jerry do yesterday? Well, we came into town late in the afternoon. We went to a cafe called the Robin Hood. Jerry took a shine to the girl playing the piano. So he stayed there and I cut out. We were to meet later at the station. He was holding the money for us to get back. This girl piano player, what was her name? Her name's Carol Moody, that's all I know. You telling the truth, Newman? Listen, Jerry's my buddy. Is he? I wonder. Boy, Corporal, what the devil are you doing? Mr. Maris is trying to help you. Mr. Maris, Jerry once saved my life. I know. What does that prove? It proves I didn't touch him. I couldn't, I swear. Do you believe me? Yes, Corporal. But I don't know why. Yes, sir, I heard that Corporal say that. He said he could kill the other soldier and really enjoy it. He was mad, sir. 
mad as anyone I ever seen. You sure you heard all that? Oh, yes, sir. I saw his face. He had a real look of hate on it. What happened then? I don't know, sir. I went on to the back of the station. What time was it? A little after five. Now listen carefully. Right about this time, did you notice anyone else heading in the direction of the tracks? No, sir. You're sure? Well... Yes? Someone run past me very fast. Did you tell Lieutenant Weston about this? No, I, I didn't think of it until later. Could you identify the man? That wouldn't be easy, sir. He was running practically. Was he big, little, tall, short? Average, I'd say. Like I say, I only saw him for a second. I see. Well, thanks. I may want to talk to you again later. Any time, sir. Well, Herb, that could be a new start. He says he saw another man. Yeah, but who? That's a good question. If you want the truth from witnesses, you have to talk to them yourself. The Robin Hood Cafe was just opening. I was the first customer. Carol Moody? She sure is, brother, and it's a rotten mood for truth. Conscience? Wrong girl. Got rid of mine years ago. Big nuisance. Uh, I can't be at times. But that's when it's smart to listen to it. You trying to say something, say it. Tell me about Jerry Hale. You don't look like a policeman. I'm not. I'm an attorney. My name is Maris Herbert Maris. I want to talk to you about Jerry Hale. Mm -hmm. You're trying to help that bum soldier work Jerry over. Give me a drink and put some muscle in it. I may have to toss a crusader out of here on his ear. Jerry Hale a nice kid? Sure, the nicest. Did you like him? Why not? He was just a kid who happened to like music, my music. How long was he here? Oh, up until a couple hours, maybe. You started to say up until closing time, didn't you? No. Yes, you did. Now, tell me the truth. Now, look, brother, if I... If he was here until closing time, he must have had a reason. What was it? You? Certainly not. Excuse me. I got to go back to work. Look, Mr. Maris, I found out a long time ago it don't pay nothing but headaches to be a witness to nothing. So, go along home. What kind of a person are you? Smart. So smart that the man who broke open Jerry Hale's skull will probably go scot-free and an innocent man rot in prison, all because you're afraid of a headache? Mr. Maris, wait, please. Look. I was hired to play at a private party last night after hours at the Adams Hotel, and I took Jerry along. Not as my date. I don't rob the cradle, but it's just that he seemed so lonely, and I knew there'd be a lot of pretty girls at the party. How'd you know that? Well, they were hostesses brought in by the man who arranged the party. What man? His name is Jack Kells. He runs an agency. Also has a thing called Escorts Beautiful. Oh, it's, it's all legitimate. It is? I, uh... I lost Jerry just as soon as he got a look at one of the hostesses I think he kind of went for. Which one? I have no idea, but he left with her about four o'clock or so. That's the last time I saw him. If it wasn't, Miss Moody, I'll find out. From the doctor's examination of Hale's injuries, did he have any idea of what happened? Well, I'll, I'll read you exactly what he said. The concussion resulted from Hale striking his head against a freight car wheel and the track. Uh, the bruises and lacerations on his face would indicate that he was struck by someone wearing a heavy ring. I see. What does he think of his chances? Well, he said they were slim. Thanks. Hello, Mr. Maris. Corporal, I want to ask you something. Yes? The man who hit Jerry may have worn a heavy ring. I've never worn one. You're certain? I can prove it. We may have some other good news. The porter now says he saw someone else around the station that morning. You mean, you mean someone who might have done it? Lieutenant, your case against Newman is evaporating fast. First, the porter says he saw someone else around the station that morning. Second, Jerry Hale's doctor believes that Jerry was struck by a man wearing a heavy ring. Newman swears he's never worn a ring. I believe that when Hale recovers consciousness, he he'll identify... He isn't going to identify anyone. Um, what? Hale died a few minutes ago without ever saying a word. Jerry, sir?
Frank Newman was charged with manslaughter in the death of his closest friend, Jerry Hale. To continue the case, I needed to check every move Jerry had made the night of his death. If Carol Moody was telling the truth about Jerry Hale going off with one of the hostesses, that hostess might lead me to someone other than Blake Newman. But first, I had to find her. My best bet was the proprietor of Escorts Beautiful, Jack Kells. Mr. Kells, if you really want to cooperate, just tell me the name of the girl that Jerry Hale left with. But I don't know. I told you before that... Who were the girls at the party? As I've already explained, they're girls that were Names here... and addresses. I can't remember the name of every girl that I assigned to a name party. Name one. Now look, this is getting silly. No, it isn't, Mr. Kells. Who was the girl that Jerry Hale left with? Okay, Mr. Maris, I've had it. I run a legitimate business. And you're not just going to walk in here and push me around. Mr. Kells, you're losing your temper. Get out, Maris. And if I see that long, aristocratic nose in my business again, I'll... Not my nose, Kells. Next time, it'll be the nose of a policeman. Police? Don't be silly. I'm clean. Are you? They're going to be curious why you're so afraid to talk about the girls at that party. They might even wonder if this little racket of yours is as legitimate as you make it out to be. Now, look, Mr. Maris. I told you. I want to cooperate. That's what you told me. Goodbye, Mr. Kells. No, wait. Here's a list of all the girls that work for Escorts Beautiful. There are 50 or 60 names on this list. 71. Thanks for all your help. I'll just take this. Wait a minute. I need that list. Well, somehow I think you'll find another copy in that folder. Uh, family Crest? Huh? Seventy-one. You must be quite a man with the ladies, Mr. Kells. With seventy-one names to check, I'd asked for Lieutenant Weston's help. Because of his official duties, Colonel McGinnis had been forced to return to camp. Corporal Newman's only hope was that the girl who was with Jerry Hale the night he was killed was included in the list. Detectives had found the girls in hotels, in bars, in rooming houses. They'd asked the same questions with no luck. Then one girl gave a different answer, and Lieutenant Weston asked me to join him when he checked out the lead. Just a minute. Lamont? Yes? I'm Lieutenant Weston. I'd like to ask you a few questions about a soldier. Look, I'm busy. I already told another cop everything I know. Well, his name is Jerry Hale, and you saw him at a private party, isn't that right? Sure. He flipped over my roommate. Bless her sweet little cold heart. It was a love at first stare, that sticky, pure, and innocent kind. And did that roommate of mine ever freeze out that sucker? Is your roommate the one he left with, Miss Lamont? That's right. Uh, call me Lorraine. What was her name? Mary Ann Hunter. Hope you kids aren't embarrassed by a girl's wash. Where is she now? Uh, that's a real fine question, mister. She's gone. Gone where? Uh, who knows? Well, she must have said something. In a note, she said she was going home, but that doesn't mean anything. Where is the note? Oh, I threw it away. When would you get this? It was here when I got in at 6 o'clock in the morning. The note and uh, 80 bucks she wanted me to give to Kells, and all her things were gone. $80? Yeah, that's what she was into Kells for, she said. Well, you don't sound too unhappy about that. I'm always happy. What's your relationship to Kells? What do you mean? Do you like him? <laughs> me? I like men, period. Uh, thank you, Miss Lamont. Miss Lamont? According to Marianne Hunter's forwarding instructions in the note, home was a small town named Brockton. In an hour, I was on a plane. Oh, Jerry. Oh, poor Jerry. Okay. You can turn off the act now. What do you mean? You took Jerry for his money, didn't you? No. I mean, he wanted to give it to me. He made me take it. Sure he did. Well, maybe it sounds silly to you, but... But 
we happened to fall in love that night. That's very touching. Maybe it was infatuation or something else. I don't know. There's a lot you don't know. All right. Maybe I'm wrong about you. Tell me what happened. Well, it's an old story. Not very funny. I'm not here to be amused. All right. I went to the city to become a model. I flopped. And I met Jack Kels. You want to work for him? Yes. He kept promising me jobs as a model. But the only ones I got were as a hostess at parties. I hated them. Pretty soon I hated him, too. But you were his girlfriend. No, that's a lie. I never was. Oh, he wanted me to be. He even fixed it so I got into debt to him. For months I lived from day to day on the few dollars he doled out to me. I couldn't get away from him. There was trouble at the party that night, wasn't there? Yes. Jack came there and saw me and Jerry together. He called Jerry to a corner and told him to leave me alone. Did he threaten him? I don't know. I suppose so. Jack would. Could anyone else have overheard this conversation? Well, yes. Yes, Lorraine. Lorraine? My roommate. She's crazy about Jack. She hates me. She was standing near the two of them. Where did you and Jerry go after you left the party? Did Jerry mention Kells? No, he just ignored it. We went to the park and talked. Then what? And then he took me home. He made me pack my things. He left some money to pay Kells off. And then he took me to the depot and put me on the train for home. He was coming to see me on his first leave. Oh, I didn't know he'd spent all his money. I didn't know. Was Kells in love with you? I don't know. Tell me, Marianne. This is very important. Was Kells in love with you? I guess so. In his way. Well, I don't know. Um, you know, it could figure. Kells considers himself a ladies' man. He's possessive, violently jealous. He's been after Marianne for months, but when he found out a kid soldier was not only starting a big romance with her, but was sending her home, he, he probably blew his top. He probably tracked them to the railroad station. Too late to stop her from leaving, but in time to corner Jerry outside. All you need is proof. Look. Now, look, gentlemen, what's all this about, anyway? If I've done something wrong, why, well, just say so. I'm not one to... Not one to what, Mr. Kells? Maybe I ought to call my lawyer. Why, you need one? Well, no, of course not. Then, Mr. Kells, you wouldn't mind coming with us. I saw. Are you positive? Sure. Will you testify to that? Sure, I will. Kill! Stop! Nothing wrong with you, Kells. Get out. Let's go. 